Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the revised GRE. In order for us to work together, you're going to have to need, you're going, you're going to have to have, you're going to have, you're going to need this book. The official guide to the GRE, the revised, the revised general test. We are solving problems out of this book. Today is our day number three, and we are on page number 112. I cannot talk today for some reason. I do not know why. Page 112. Turn to it, please. We are given an algebraic expression, or rather, not an expression, but an equation. Oh, while we are at it, while we talk about it, what's the difference between an algebraic expression and an equation? For example, 4x plus 3. 4x plus 3 is not an equation. Why is it not an equation? Because in order for something to qualify as an equation, it has to have an equal sign. 4x plus 3 equals 5. No. 4x plus 3 equals 5, or 4x plus 3 equals y, or whatever it is. 5 was fine. 5 would have been fine too. We'll simply solve for x. But that would have been an equation. An equation is so called because it has an equal sign. This is an expression. This is an expression which has two terms in it. Two terms. First term and the second term. It has two terms. It's an expression with two terms. 4x is the first term, where 4 is called the coefficient. And x, of course, is the variable. And 3 is a constant. 3 by itself, if there's nothing with it, it's just a constant. But if I put equals 7, now it becomes an equation. So I misspoke a little while ago. I misspoke a little while ago when I said that we have an expression here. We do not have an expression. What we have our, in our hand is an equation, which looks something like this. y equals 2x squared plus 7x minus 3. And we are asked to compare x versus y. Very simple, very straightforward problem, x versus y. The thing to do here is to plug in different couple of different values of x. Plug in a couple of different values of x and see what y turns out to be. Plug in a couple of different values of x and see what y turns out to be. Now, when you're plugging in different values of x, the easiest scenario always is to plug in 0 because it, it, it cuts down the work tremendously. If I plug in 0 here, let's put it here, 2, two times 0 squared plus 7 times 0 minus 3 then we don't have to do anything much at all because 0 squared is 0 and 0 times 2 is 0 times any number is 0 so this becomes 0, it disappears 7 times 0 is 0 so the whole thing disappears and y turns out to be negative 3 y would turn out to be negative 3 so we know that when, when x is 0 there's your column A there's our column B we know that, we know that when x equals 0 y equals negative 3 we just found it. When x equals 0, y equals negative 3. In which case, because 0 is more than negative 3, in this case the answer is A. Now plug in one more time to see what happens. And if you plug in the second time and the answer still turns out to be A, then it's always a good idea to try it third time and perhaps even fourth time, depending on how much time you have and what sort of mood you are in. But I always try at least one more time. If one more, I'm going to repeat what I just said. When you plug in the second time around and the answer doesn't change and the answer still turns out to be A, then just to be on the safe side, try one more time, the third time to plug in 
a third time to see if the answer changes. But of course, if the answer changes in the second time around, then you're done. The answer would be D. So let's plug in a different number now. Instead of 0, let's plug in 1. Let's plug in 1 for x. So 2 times 1 squared plus 7 times 1 minus 3. 2 times 1 squared plus 7 times 1 minus 3. Let's see what that gives us. 1 squared is just 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 7 times 1 is 7. And a minus 3. 2 plus 7 is 9, 9 minus 3 is positive 6. So now we know that when x equals when x equals positive 1, we know that y equals positive 6. Well in this in this scenario, when x is positive 1, y is positive 6. The value of y is more than the value of x in this scenario. Now the answer changes. The answer is b now. Before the answer was a. We have a conflicting answer. Therefore, because we have conflicting answers, therefore the correct answer is D. D because it cannot be determined which one is bigger, X or Y. It depends on what values of X and Y we plug in. What, what values of X we plug in. If we plug in 0, it turns out to be negative 3. If we plug in 1, it turns out to be 6. If we plug in something else, let's see what, what it turns out to be. If we were to plug in fractions, then it might change again, but we don't want to do that. Because it's conflicting answer, the answer is D. That's it. The next problem that we see on page number 113, it's a little bit, little bit more tricky. And the one after that is even more complicated. But the idea, as I explained on the first day, and it's important that you go in sequence, which is why I always put the day numbers in my tag, so that you, instead of just putting page numbers, because in page numbers you can very easily miss a page, uh, you may not remember which page you stop at, but I always put a day number. Today is our day number three. It's important that you go in sequence from day one through day two and three and so forth. And as I explained to you on day number one in the introduction, the idea is to go through every single problem that you find in this book, page by page, page by page, starting from section number, starting from page number 107, which is where the whole thing starts. From page 107, where they talk about GRE quantitative reasoning. Starting from that page, we're going to do every single problem that appears on any given page. Tomorrow we're going to do on page number. Tomorrow we're going to do a problem that you will find on page number 113. All right. I'll see you then. Bye.